All right, welcome to 4.3 part two, where our next uh, financial statement we're going to be doing is our statement of stockholders equity. Um, let's take a look, quick look at our instructions because we're gonna need to reference those a little bit. It says step two is to complete the statement of stockholders equity. There were 74,000 shares of a dollar par value stock issued as of January 1st. And there were a thousand shares issued during the current year. So as we come down here, um, our statement of stockholders equity again, heading's already done for us. A note though that it is for the year ended as December 31st. And then remember that when we do a statement of stockholders equity, that the first few lines um, are where we state some of the information about our capital stock. So our capital stock, the very first thing that we put in the first line is how much is our par value? Um, if you remember from the paragraph we just read, our par value is a dollar, so a dollar par value. And then the next thing that we do is we start with how many shares were outstanding as of the first of the year. So we put January 1 um, of the current year, and again, we had 74,000 shares issued. So if you start typing, it will fill in for you, but please just remember what those are in case there comes a point where it doesn't autofill for you. Um, so if we had a dollar par value and we had 74,000 shares outstanding, that means that our stock to begin with had $74,000. The next up is how many shares did we issue during the current year? Remember that we issued a thousand shares. So we just say issued during the current year and we put the amount, which is a thousand. So a thousand shares at a dollar par value, that's a thousand dollars. So then our next one is our balance as of the end of the year, which would be 75,000. So we do state that here, 75,000 shares are issued as of the last day of the current year. So obviously that would be $75,000 since we have $1 par value. Hopefully that all made sense there for you. Okay, so next up we need to find our retained earnings amount as of January 1st. So what we do is we take our 4-1 work together, we go back to our adjusted trial balance. And we come down, or I should say, wherever you're at on the scroll, we want to find our retained earnings. And this is as of the current year because we haven't added our net income into it yet for this year. So that 165.7383 is the number we're looking for. So we come over here and we put 165.73 and 83 cents. And then we get our net income for the year. Our net income, of course, would come from our income statement we just completed. So we go back to our income statement and we come down here. Our net income, of course, is $63,189.54. So we go back to our statement. $63,189.54. And then we have to take out our dividends. So again, that's coming from our adjusted trial balance. Um, our dividends are the ones that we've already paid, so that's that 16000 right here. So then to get our net increase, we have to take our net income and subtract out our dividends, and that's going to give us the 47189 And so once we take our balance and retained earnings and add it to what our net income actually is for the year. Once we take out our dividends, we end up with a balance of 212,263.37. So our total stockholders equity for the year will be the 75,000 in capital stock plus our balance at retained earnings as of the end of the year. We add those two together and our total stockholders equity is 287,000 $263.37. And so that is our completed statement of stockholders equity. Um, again, I think just for the sake of keeping everything together, I'm going to put our uh, next financial statement into a separate video.